What's up, guys? This is Irene Aldrich. It's great to see you. Um, and I uh, obviously am recording these YouTube videos, several of them now in a row. So if you're interested, and I hope you are, please subscribe to my channel, uh, which is Irene Aldrich Talks. And uh, also check out the other videos that, that uh, we have. Most of the videos, the latest videos are about our brand new book, which is Big Data Science and Finance. You can see it behind me. Uh, it was co-authored uh, with uh, Professor Marco Villaneta. Uh, which, as you know, is a superstar and uh, quant researcher as well, quant finance researcher specifically. And uh, today we're going to talk about unsupervised learning. And unsupervised learning is, uh, I believe, really the core of data science. A lot of people think that neural networks or supervised learning models like random forests are the data science or, or uh, machine learning broadly, which is really when people talk about machine learning, they really talk about neural networks uh, in many cases or, or similar models to, to neural networks, basically supervised learning models. Uh, in my opinion, this is not at all what the majority of big data science is about, uh, of data science. And, and uh, today I'm just going to show you a really cool application of unsupervised learning, which is, in my opinion, is the gist of, of data science. Uh, it's a very simple application. The code is available online in, in chapter, under chapter six. Of course, it's described in great detail in our book, uh, in Big Data Science, where, where you can uh, look at it and also see the proofs um, and other mathematical constructs okay um, so uh, but right now I'm going to show you where to find it on our website so this is our website um, it's you can find it by going to big data financebook.com or you can go to www.bdfbook.com as, as we, we are now here Okay, and uh, we have great content here. Uh, so we have reviews. We're um, grateful to receive tremendous reviews for our book. Uh, we have a table of contents, which is also amazing, uh, as you can see. And finally, we have code, okay? Um, so to access the code, you need to subscribe uh, to our website. And just in case you're not sure if you wanna to subscribe to our website, we already have 539 uh, uh, people who subscribed uh, to our website, okay? Uh, and the book has only been out since February. See so here, February, March. This is in real time updating how many people have subscribed and you can see it by yourself by going to www.bdfbook.com slash admin. It will get you to this page and you can see how many people have registered. And people who have registered for the website, they, they some of them self-report their interests. And here you can find the interest, uh, interest of people that, that uh, have registered for the website. And as you can see, they come from all areas of finance, which I think is fascinating as well. And we're grateful to everybody who's registered. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube, which is Irene Aldrich Talks. Okay, but today we're gonna to talk about this code. It's a code for chapter six, again, unsupervised factor models. Uh, we have limited time here, so I'm not going to go through the entire content of the chapter, but we're just going to uh, look at, at how these unsupervised models are performing, specifically these factor models, on the S&P 500 data. Now, why on the S&P 500 data? Well, S&P 500 is a very common benchmark. Okay, so we're just going to see what we can do with that. So we're going to use this pandas library of Python. Every, all the code here is in Python, which I think is the coolest uh, language. And, and I am a C++ person uh, by background. Uh, and uh, you know I can program in everything. I can program in Java and Perl, et cetera. Python is the best. Um, so um, we take tickers, uh, we read them from a file, tickers.csv, a comma separated file where I have stored all the S&P 500 tickers. So the next, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to measure one month returns for each of, of the name within the S&P 500 for the last five years. Um, so we're going to approximate this one month uh, period by 20 days. We're just going to, we're going to, uh, measure returns every 20 days, and then we're going to move over 20 days, measure returns again, et cetera, for all the tickers in the, within the S&P 500. And that's what we're going to, to do in this snippet of code, okay? So we have data for the S&P 500 downloaded separately. Now, next, what we're going to do, and it's an important step, we're going to demean and rescale 
the returns by uh, subtracting the mean from, from of each uh, uh, return column and then dividing it by the standard deviation. Okay, and finally, now that we detrended and rescaled the returns, we're going to perform singular value decomposition, which is super easy to do in Python. Uh, and again, we described the uh, singular value decomposition in great detail in the book, and we show why it's optimal. Um, but next is, is what's super important. So next we're going to uh, take only the first, so, so this SVD is giving us three vectors, okay? So this vector U, which is commonly referred as a user vector. Uh, uh, we, we are not particularly interested in this today, but we're interested in vector S, which is the vector of singular values, and the vector V transformed, which is the um, eigenvectors or singular vectors in this case. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take the first singular vector and we're going to reconstruct the returns only using this first singular vector. And th this code in, in, in the in the bullet point five shows you exactly how to do that. Uh, we're going to use mat matrix multiplication uh, to achieve that. And uh, the next thing after we reconstruct these returns, so we basically reduce them considerably. Um, okay, uh, uh, so now we take this first eigenvector, singular vector, and we we have these returns that we created, re very much reduced returns uh, that we created from this vector. And next, we're going to see how this performs. So we're going to take returns of individual securities within the S&P 500, and we're going to regress those on these reconstructed returns that we obtained with just one uh, singular vector. Okay, so singular vector, this, this first singular vector, you can think about it as the coefficients to our new eigen portfolio. Okay, so we, it's basically these betas that the system is suggesting are optimal for us. Okay, so unsupervised learning is suggesting that these are the optimal factors for our portfolio comprising the S&P 500 returns. Okay, so um, and so we comprise, we make this portfolio, and then we compute the alphas, which are the intercept, the betas, and the R, R square of the regression. And it's we're using basic linear regression. You can see the code here. Again, you can look at it in detail on our website. And and then just for fun, we're going to do the same uh, for the S and P 500. Um, on on the uh, sorry, first we're going to plot these. Okay, for uh, all of these, all of these um, alphas and betas and R squared that we received for each stock in the S and P 500. And here, here's the plot. Okay, so the top line is the betas. Then next line is the alphas, which is almost zero on average. Uh, and then the R squared, which is very healthy. You know, it goes from uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 uh, basically, which is a very nice number. Okay. So, but next, just for fun, we're going to do the same analysis. We're going to regress all these stocks, but this time on the equally weighted portfolio of, of the S&P 500. Again, we're uh, taking 20 day returns of the S&P 500 con constituents and we're just averaging them, okay? So we're creating this uh, equally weighted portfolio and then we're going to take um, the stocks, each returns of individual stocks and regress them on this equally weighted portfolio. Okay, so we're doing the same thing. M is our number of stocks in total. We're going to plot it again, just like as we did just now, and, and we get this picture. Now, this picture looks very familiar. You know, if you look at it, we, get, we again have betas varying from one, from uh, maybe 0.5 to two, and we have alpha zero on average, and we have very healthy R squared. Now, this doesn't look familiar to you. Didn't we see just now here? Look at that, you know, it's, it's kind of looks very, very similar. So just for fun, we're going to plot uh, betas of, uh, uh, that are plotted in figure 6.1 6 and 6.2 against each other. So we're going to take betas that uh, in this case, regression generated by regressing on the first eigenvector portfolio, first eigen portfolio. And we're going to plot it against the betas that are generated by regressing these individual S&P 500 uh, stock returns on the S&P equally weighted portfolio. And this is all over five years of data. Uh, okay, so it should give us uh, pretty solid inferences. And here is the picture. Oh no, they're the same. Um, so um, and this is one of the very interesting um, outcomes of, of the Eigen portfolio. So for the S&P 500, the uh, eigen portfolio, the first, uh, uh, the eigen portfolio comprised by the first 
uh, singular vector, eigenvector, is actually the same or pretty much the same, very, very close as the equally weighted portfolio for the S&P 500. Now, uh, and, and so what does it tell us? Well, in the book, we show that singular value decomposition or PCA, which is principal component analysis, it's, they're close cousins. They're really all optimal factorization techniques, okay? So they deliver us op optimal factors uh, that fit into, let's say, Ross's models, or in this case, it's a cap M, right? So we, what we're saying is our optimal factor is the market. Um, and in this case, it's equally weighted market. It's not value weighted market as, as often we see in the academic papers. Um, but um, it, this is just a very interesting result. Now you can have very, very nice results if, if you add more um, vectors to, to your optimal uh, eigen portfolio. Um, and there are many different variations that we discuss in the book, how to make even extract uh, alpha, not just, not just extract the uh, equally weighted returns, but actually produce a very stable alpha. Um, and uh, again, here we did not tell uh, our system that we want to come up with a market portfolio. We did not tell it anything about CAPM. Okay, we just let it run uh, with its own data. We, we only gave it the data. And this is what the system produced for us as the optimal uh, first factor. Okay, uh, the optimal uh, first portfolio for, for the S&P 500 stocks. So I think this is this in itself is, is extremely fascinating. And um, again, you can see all this code online and there are many, many different variations you can come up with. Uh, you can play around with a number of eigenvectors you include in your portfolio or, or, or um, singular vectors. And um, uh, it, depending on, on all these factors, you will get different results and you will get very, very interesting results and, and very profitable results. Okay, so I hope you guys are going to take advantage of it and we'll see you next time. Thank you and take care.